I've had a lot of time over the last couple weeks to revisit and organize all of my old abandoned footage from the past couple of years. So I thought it'd be interesting to rank my top 10 places I visited and include my favorite shot from those places. Some of these shots have been featured in the videos that are on my channel now, but I made sure to include a lot here that haven't been seen before. Also on this list is one location that I actually never released a video for, I just gathered footage there. I had fun putting this together and I have fun with the entire Abandoned From Above series, so let's jump into it. My top 10 spots and shots from Abandoned From Above. Number 10, Westboro State Hospital. Originally Westboro Insane Hospital, this was a historic hospital that sat on more than 600 acres. This campus is now demolished, but we were lucky enough to get in and capture it before that happened. If you're from New England and you're into urban exploring, this spot was basically a favorite for everyone, and it was like a rite of passage to go here. The hospital was established in 1884, and the existing buildings were renovated to accommodate the needs of a mental hospital and was opened in 1886. It closed in 2010, but parts of the campus were closed well before that. As you can see, this place is huge, and I was able to film it a few weeks before its demolition started in early 2019. I love this shot specifically because it shows the scope and decay of the entire hospital with an entire roof being collapsed into the structure. Number 9, Rhode Island Summer Camp. This camp was constructed in the late 1930s deep in the woods of Rhode Island. This was definitely the most challenging shoot, especially with my drone because there were trees and bushes everywhere. So we threw on our orange vest because it was hunting season and got to work. So my drone, this little guy right here, has sensors all around it to detect collisions and prevent me from flying into anything. While I was flying at this abandoned summer camp, the sensors were going crazy and I was getting alerts non-stop on the app while I was flying. This is what it sounds like to be flying in a closed space like this about to hit something every two seconds. It's really amazing that I didn't crash the drone despite how many trees and branches were in the way for every single shot. I had my sister and my brother-in-law there with me spotting the drone all the time, so thankfully uh, I had some backup to make sure I didn't destroy this thing. I really wanted this video to have a ghostly look of just floating through the woods, and it was a chilly, cloudy day when we visited, which was perfect for this. This shot specifically stands out to me because I managed to avoid 15 trees at least while getting this one, and for that, I'm very proud, and it gets a spot on my list. Number 8 the Bell's Mansion Estate. Between 1876 and 1883, lawyer and businessman Theodore M. Davis built a mansion known as the Reefs, later called the Bells, on this property where he lived until his death in 1915. It changed hands and was eventually used for coastal artillery during World War II, then abandoned shortly after. The heavily vandalized manor house, yes, even in the 1950s, people vandalized abandoned places. Well, it was partially destroyed by a fire in 1960 and eventually torn down in 1963. This carriage house for the horses is all that remains. And it's especially beautiful in the summer when all of the ivy and foliage has grown in and covered the remains. This shot perfectly captures the beauty of abandonment to me, just being peacefully reclaimed by nature. And for that, it gets a spot on my list. Number seven, the bank vaults and offices. This one is actually pretty recent, but it was the most involved shoot I've done short of a full length documentary. 
We actually had to film here on two separate days to capture everything. There was a lot to see, and definitely the best things in here were the vaults and the main lobby, which is where my favorite shot is. It's actually the first one in the video tracking backwards. I love this opening because it sets the scene right off the bat by slowly exposing the extent of the decay here and the size of the bank itself. I actually shot this with a DJI Osmo Pocket, which is the same company that makes my drone. And this little camera is basically a drone, but without the propellers, which allowed me to get that really smooth shot tracking backwards. Number six, Potter Hill Mill. One word for this one, beautiful. My friend Eric and I drove down here at sunrise one morning just to shoot this video. I had this place on my list for a while and planned to visit here specifically in autumn so I could get the leaves changing colors. I was very particular about this one and I think it paid off. The colors and the setting totally capture New England in the fall. I'll say it again, beautiful. I love living here. The tricky thing about this shoot is that I had to launch my drone from across a river and kind of guess where it was once it got to the other side of the mill. This video gets my most nervous maneuver award when I dropped the drone into the collapsed mill and couldn't see it in my line of sight. Gotta risk it for the biscuit though, right? This one stands out to me as the most visually pleasing location. Everything combined here, I'm a huge fan of. Number five, the Crosley Building. Constructed in 1929 for the famous Crosley radios, it sits off the main highway in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's huge and I love the industrial architecture here. It was actually designed to resemble a giant radio. Crosley used the buildings to broadcast from his radio tower on the roof. Transmissions from the radio station could actually be heard from Florida to New York. Most of the building is empty now since the first seven floors were used for manufacturing, but the ornate CEO office is still at the top of this building. It looks completely different than the New England mills that I'm used to seeing, and it has a super interesting history which made it exciting to shoot. This is the first place that I visited as part of my Abandoned From Above series, so if you watch that one, it's edited a lot differently than what I do now, but it made me learn some good techniques with the drone. The shot that sticks out to me from this location is a simple left to right flight by the corner of the building. It shows the sunset gleaming off one huge windowed side, then hits the corner that expands the shot out right to show the scope of this place, with the added bonus of giving a quick glimpse inside. The lighting and movement gives this location and shot a spot on my list. Number 4. The Enchanted Forest Amusement Park the Enchanted Forest was a fairy tale themed amusement park that opened in 1971 and closed in 2005 after declining attendance and revenue. I actually went here when I was a kid with my family. I don't remember it too well, but knowing that I attended this spot back in the day made it pretty eerie to walk through. There used to be winding paths through the woods here leading to different attractions. These days, most of the attractions are demolished or pretty well vandalized, but there's one building here that especially sticks out to me, and it made for one of my all-time favorite shots. This is footage of that building in 1991. It's a recreation of a classic red schoolhouse. Today, after being abandoned for almost 15 years, it's somehow nearly untouched. This shot shows the one lonely remaining building sitting in the woods surrounded by all this greenery, completely silent. Whenever I think about places I visited, my mind always goes back to that shot. 
knowing that I was here as a kid and seeing a place that brought a lot of joy to people being retaken by nature is really hard to forget. And for that, it earns a spot on my top 10. Number three, the summer resort. This is what's left of a once popular summer resort. We were lucky that when we visited here to film, everything was open to explore. Since then, the place has been completely boarded up and has cameras. So I would recommend not going here if you're planning on it. Originally the Grandview Hotel, the facility became famous during the height of what's called the resort era of the early 1900s. In 1958, this property was purchased by a new owner and turned it into a premier music venue and bed and breakfast. In 2000, it officially closed after declining attendance and interest, and it was pretty much left the same as the day it closed. There was a lot to explore here, but my favorite shot is of the back of one of the guest houses that went up in flames in early 2014. It's haunting that only part of this burned up while the rest of the house still has beds made and curtains on the windows. If we go back to the shot, you can even see curtains moving in the wind in this one on the right side. It's something that looks like it's out of a horror movie, and that's why it made it onto my list. Number two, the windswept beach mansion remains. This is all that remains of a beachside mansion in Rhode Island. If you're from here, you know exactly where this is, and if you're not from Rhode Island, feel free to visit anytime. The history of this place is absolutely crazy, which is why it's so high on my list. In the 1840s, a businessman named Perry Davis was down on his luck and extremely sick. He decided, hey, I'll make my own medicine. So he concocted a combination of opiates, ethyl alcohol, and herbs, and big surprise, he felt much better. He dubbed the tonic Perry Davis's vegetable painkiller and even trademarked the term, which we still use today. Of course, his tonic sold like, I want to say hotcakes, but I'll just say it like it is. It sold like powerful drugs, so it sold well. So well, in fact, that his grandson was able to sell off the painkiller name and with the profits, build what was called the windswept mansion less than a hundred yards from the ocean. The family eventually sold the property in the 1940s when it was transformed into a restaurant. After changing hands a couple more times, the property sat vacant and open to the elements. After a fire in the early 1970s, it was finally raised, leaving this stone foundation as the only monument to Perry's drug potion, Painkiller. Rhode Island, beach, abandoned, sunset, I'm in, say no more. And now for the number one spot on my list. This is an abandoned location that I visited and captured a while ago, but never featured any of the footage in a full video. I thought now is a great time to release it because I do love how the shots came out, and there's one in particular that completely tops my list. Number one, the military base and neighborhood. This is what's left of a Cold War Air Force base. When it was built in 1951, this base became one of the first radar listening stations to monitor for Soviet bombers. It was part of the United States Air Defense Command radar network, and it served as a ground control intercept and warning station. There was a small but close-knit community that grew up on the base, which featured barracks, officers' quarters, technical buildings and offices, as well as a bar, bowling alley, small movie theater, and church. Entire families were raised here through the years. Everything you see in these photos is still on the base today, just minus the people. There is obviously a lot to show here, 
And don't worry, we will get to that in just a minute. But first I wanna focus on a structure here that isn't visible in these shots. One that I found to be wicked interesting while researching. The most interesting thing about this base is something that sat 100 miles off the coast here. Something that was connected to this base at one point. At this time in history, the United States was paranoid about a Soviet invasion. So they took extra precautions with the technology they had. They were constantly vigilant about not if an attack would happen, but when it would happen. So about 100 miles off the coast from this base, they constructed another radar station in the Atlantic Ocean called Texas Tower 2, named after the oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. The structure basically sat on three massive legs that were sunk into the bank of the ocean 50 feet below, and it was raised 80 feet above water, which made for what I think is a pretty menacing view if you were approaching it by boat. The tower was built with three decks, housing the mechanical equipment and the crew quarters, a helicopter landing area, and two large cranes. There were also the operations area, and atop that structure were the three radar sets with antennas enclosed in protective bubbles. This is such a Cold War looking photo. Imagine pulling up on this Stranger Things looking building in the middle of the ocean. The horror movies just write themselves here. With advancements in technology and rising maintenance costs, Texas Tower 2 was decommissioned and abandoned in 1963. When the salvage crew came to dismantle the abandoned structure, they planned to detonate the three legs and float the platform back to shore. Only instead of floating the structure, it sank to the bottom of the ocean, where it remains today. Unfortunately, we can't see it from above today, but luckily divers still explore the area to see what's left of Texas Tower 2. And now, heading back to the mainland, where the station was decommissioned in 1994 at the end of the Cold War. The neighborhoods of family housing have been mostly untouched since they were abandoned in the 90s. I imagine this is partly due to the fact that the outside of these houses is lined with asbestos tiles. So because of this, they're likely to remain that way until they are demolished. This place is amazing. Whenever I visit abandoned places, I get extremely excited being able to see these places stuck in time. It lets us see what would happen if people just disappeared, and it's rare to be able to see what day-to-day -day life would look like. Something like an entire neighborhood is pretty rare, which made this the holy grail of urban exploration, at least for me. It was hard to choose, but the shot that really stands out to me is a rotating shot on the corner of one block showing three houses. It looks like something out of The Walking Dead. It is so post-apocalyptic looking that it goes straight to the top of my list. And that concludes my top 10 abandoned from above shots and locations. I've said this before, but I have a lot of fun working on this series. I keep finding new locations and new ways to tell their stories. You can check them all out on my YouTube channel or my website if you're interested. So thank you for watching.